Hey gamers, welcome to Vlog Matters number 15. There hasn't been a whole lot of updates since yesterday's vlog, but I want to go over some really small stuff and then talk about what we've got yellow and red up on the to-do here on the uh, on the video. So first, the yellow thing is what's in progress. So we started, uh, I started building a mode menu. So if I just get mutilated by all these guys real quick, you'll see that uh, I changed, there was just like a reset button right here before. So now there's just some like icons that I picked up from the asset store and tweaked a little bit. Um, settings does nothing. This is the replay button. So if you click it, it restarts the, uh, the level basically. <clears throat> Let's run through and get, uh, get down to zero again. So we haven't come up with, or we haven't implemented a unified like font set or look to the 2Ds. You can see like, well, you can't see right now. Let's talk about this real quick and then I'll talk about this health bar up here. If I click this little controller, it changes like what mode I can pick. And right now these are just example things you can pick from. Just like a running guy or this, what we're gonna do uh, later possibly is like a building kind of thing. Um, but if I just pick one of these, it just goes back to the last menu and lets you play. So I still have to do the code to hook it up to what thing gets fired, but that shouldn't be um, too bad at all. Uh, so if I play this and we look at the UI in the upper left corner there, um, while it's available if I don't get killed right away by these red guys, um, you see that the numbers are pretty smooth and it looks okay, but <clears throat> we'd like to stick with like the cube look to a lot of stuff, so a lot of the cube fonts and stuff. Um, and we just haven't implemented any of that stuff because right now the primary focus is getting everything in there and working and then uh, adding um, all the art and the look to it and then... Uh, extending on what we've got built as a base so like like if you watch the last one you kind of notice like there's only three different biomes you can go through there's this grasslands there's the desert and then there's the snow one and those are pretty standard and pretty basic but that's because those are just the first three ones we just wanted to throw in here um, we're building this so we can add as many biomes as we want and just add them super fast once all the uh, base is there and that's why it was really important last vlog when I said it's really easy to add new stuff in this game going forward whether it's a new biome or it's a piece of debris like these trees and these bushes or it's a new enemy specific to a certain kind of biome so we've got a ton of biome ideas um, but right now we're not focusing on the art solely we're doing still a lot of the scripting and coding oh gosh um, yeah, so that's that's like a huge bug, all those guys just hanging out by the wall. You almost always get hit when you go through the wall, especially into the snow biome, sometimes in the desert one as well. So those were basically the primary updates. If you look up there in the to-do, you'll also see that multi-threading has turned red um, and been crossed out. So I spent some time looking at multi-threading and how it could work with our, uh, our level generation. So like I showed last time, if I back up, and last time I had it selected, so everything was green. Um, but if I back up in the camera in my scene over here and I start playing, you can see these red lines and they kind of flash. Uh, and while, while I go forward, they continue to go forward and uh, the entire level keeps generating um, at those. So if I pause it and we go down and look at that, um, these lines are basically rays that we cast in real time. And those rays basically look and say, hey, am I hitting something? If not, I should be generating something right there. Um, and what that does is you can see in this case, we've got a green one right here. And that green one says, yeah, uh, generate something here. So it shoots a line back this way, a ray back this way that you can't see because I'm not drawing it. And it starts building those straight out until it hits this point. Now, these ones that are all red, they're all hitting something, so there's no need to do anything with those rays. And what I wanted to do is take all that code and put it into its own kind of separate background thread and run all that stuff. The problem with that is that our ray logic, both casting this stuff and instantiating most of these tiles and these objects and stuff, that's all Unity code. It's Unity API calls, and you're not supposed to do Unity API calls within a thread because... Uh, it's not thread safe operations. So basically what you would do is have a thread that does all the calculating of stuff and then spits it back out to some level gen and then that does all the a uh, Unity API calls. I tried to do that part. Um, the problem is the first thing we do in all of our level generation logic 
is fire this ray and look and see if we're hitting anything. And that's the that's the point that I wanted to get into the threading, and that's uh, not seemingly possible right now. I didn't want to go and try throwing all these Unity things into uh, um, their own threads because um, I was reading, like I said, that it's not safe. So basically the first chunk of code to do the level generation logic is Unity API calls. And then that's to cast the ray. What does it do after it casts the ray? Well, if nothing exists, it goes and it generates something at that point. There's some logic in there for spawning that what it does is it say, it says, hey, look at the, the tile. So if we look at just one of these, I'll jump under it because you can see it better. Hey, look at this tile right here. If there's nothing here, generate something. But what it does is it shoots rays uh, to the left, right, and back and says, grab the nearest uh, tile. So tile here, tile here, tile here, and then line it up. So those are all Unity API calls because ray seems to be a Unity API uh, object. So to do almost anything with our level generation logic, we're using that Unity API, and that prevents us from using multi-threading at that point. It'd be nice if we could cast rays in the thread, determine whether we were gonna generate it by adjusting spawn points and stuff like that, and then spitting those spawns back out and then processing those as a Unity API call, but I don't think we can unless we change this ray generation logic. And it seems to be working fine right now and we're getting pretty decent, actually we're getting really good frames per second um, while we're playing now with this. So I don't know if it's worth the time right now to spend on threading and trying to get that performance pull out of there when it still runs uh, pretty well. Um, it doesn't run so hot when I'm doing the recording like I'm doing right now. So if I run the stats, I'll probably be hitting like a 50 to 60. Yeah, it sticks around the like low 50s range. And when I'm not recording, um, it kind of pops up to like 120. Granted, this is all on a, uh, a Windows PC. Eventually, when we go to mobile, we'll have to do some checks on there. We haven't done any major um, performance increases in any of our stuff yet. We did a really simple um, collisions one, uh, collider thing. And that was basically it. Nothing else has been uh, performance tested. Uh, like I said, I get about 120 outside of doing this while I'm recording. Also, we're doing a bunch of things that we're not planning to do in the final game. This is kind of a lot of enemies to get around right now, especially for, um, I guess, just in general. But later on, it's going to increase enemies as you go f further forward. Uh, so especially this red one, this is a lot of enemies to spit out on the screen and be generating all different paths and collisions and stuff like that. I think when we cut that down, that's going to increase performance, but I'm not worried about it right now. So I don't really want to focus on, uh, spending our time on something that's, uh, that's a feature that's not necessary. So not that, you know, a mode select screen of being you know, dying and seeing two little icons is a big deal. Um, but building that lets us, as I get whomped by all these guys, building that lets us say, okay, if we need to extend this in the future, if we want to add a new mode to this screen, we've already got some place setter stuff here. So we know how to just add to that. Uh, and I think that's, that's a good, that's kind of what we've been doing thus far is adding all this, uh, all this base stuff that lets us extend it in the future. Um, the plans for the biomes are pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to work on some of that art, but um, working in Cubicle, which is what we use, uh, it's a voxel editing program um, from MindDesk. And using Cubicle is definitely something like, as a programmer and not an artist, not only do I have to learn how to uh, make things representative of what I want them to look like, but I need to do it with cubes and in a certain, we only use a certain number of cubes. Um, we're kind of breaking away from that a little bit, which is okay, but we usually use like a 20 by 20 by 20 cube um, as our base and then we build off of that. So you can see all these little pieces, these little chunks of ground, these tiles. Let's go look at one of those. One of these tiles is 20 by 20 by one deep. 
right here. So there's one cube there, and there's 20 going, you know, uh, X, and, X and Z. So when we go and we create something like this cactus, we start with a 20 by 20 by 20, which is, you know, same thing, just 20 high and not just one high. And then we, you know, build from there or we cut down to it. The trees that are uh, in the grasslands biome are actually a little taller than 20, but um, we can make it taller and not wider and it's still fine. We can still make it wider and it's okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we kind of want to stick to the same scale so everything looks uniform. And when we're talking about that, let's look at one cool little thing real quick. Let's see, uh, resources, biomes. So it's kind of fun to play with the sizes of all this stuff. Um, if we go into that biomes loader, this JSON file, and we change some of these, like let's change these bushes to like two and let's say max of four, and then take the trees and max them up to like, Five. It's fun to get real crazy with this stuff. Let's go two and six. So the min max scale just does a random between two and six, um, including two, but not including six. You can see you get a little bit of a, actually the performance isn't chugging as bad as it was. Some of these models originally, we didn't have them. Um, we weren't doing a certain thing in cubicle that fills the final model with uh, cubes. So what it was doing is trying to render stuff on the inside of the trees, the trees especially. And when you would scale them like that, it would just kill performance really badly. Um, so that was kind of like an art thing we had to learn, art pipeline thing we learned to do with Cubicle. But it's kind of cool just playing with like the sizings of that stuff. Uh, the only problem with making stuff this size um, is if I get really close to these trees, you can kind of see I'm kind of colliding with chunks of them that don't seem to have you know model there and that's because we're using real simple box colliders for everything right now um, because they're uh, better in terms of performance than a mesh collider is so when you get to something that's real abstractly shaped that's not really a, you know big version of a cube shape like these trees you can see there's little their bases are kind of like little pluses and there's a big chunk of open um, space between the plus, uh, I guess you call them like the plus legs, you know, the parts that stick way out. So when you make a cube, uh, a box collider around that, it doesn't match up. And then especially when you scale it, that just scales that issue. <clears throat> so you can see with these apple trees, the bases aren't as plus shaped. Um, and that was intentional. See there, that thing like went away real early. It even does it on these smaller trees looks like I'm hitting stuff that's not, you know, really colliding with me. Stuff like this cactus, way easier. Because we don't care if you hit the arms. But we care if you hit, like, the base of it. So that's kind of like an issue with scaling that we'll have to look at. It might just be a, a you know, something we have to learn at with using cubicle and building our models. Maybe make them... I don't know, maybe a little more squarish or something. But yeah, so those are those are the small updates and some uh, design thoughts on the art style. Um, hopefully, we can get some more of these items finished. Let's stop this and see what else. Uh, mode menu. So I'm going to work on some more mode stuff with um, actually implementing different modes that'll change as you uh, as you play. So if I play it right now, it just says super wall crash, zooms in, goes down. Eventually what's going to happen is when you uh, die and you select a new mode, you'll come into the game. At least this is all temporary right now. This is all the temporary plan. You'll come in, pick your mode. Let's say this is standard mode and this is craft mode. You click this. Uh, either it's going to autoplay it or you might have to click play again. We're not, I'm not quite sure about that. When you click this, it'll say the same you know, super wall crash thing, but it'll say craft mode under it. So you know what you're playing every time you're playing it. We can also do some other things like um, maybe having some kind of little symbol on the reset menu there or something, but uh, gotta get that code in so it actually kicks off a new mode when you select it, not just returns back to the screen. Uh, let's see, some other items we're gonna work on. Extra large debris, I did a little bit of work with that, but I was doing it with extra large tiles. I wanna be able to make tiles that aren't 20 by 20, 
by one. I want to make them like 40 by 40 by one or something even bigger so I can make a bigger object that it'll spawn and it'll be smart enough to say, okay, hey, don't spawn anything in these other slots that would be reserved for another 20 by 20 tile. And I put that in and it was just terrible. It was killing performance and it was just not working at all. Things were clipping and stuff. So there's gonna have to be some work with that. I think the debris, extra large debris is easier than the extra large tiles though, um, just in the way that we check for their generation. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that are going on. Hopefully uh, we get these mode menus in. Um, tomorrow probably will be a good day to get some of that stuff in here. And uh, probably wanna do a little more testing. We've deployed it to the uh, the iPhone 6 Plus so far, that's what I've deployed it to. Um, I've got a 4S I wanna test it on and see what kind of performance we're looking at. The 6 Plus, it ran super smooth, but there were some issues because it ran in a lower quality mode and ran, uh, it messed up almost all of the textures. Uh, they were a lower res and with these cube looks, the lower res made it look just, just terrible. It was all blurry. So we should probably do another deploy on that pretty soon. Uh, make sure we're keeping up those performance um, targets. And then, uh, yeah, I think it'll be pretty cool. Uh, one quick last mention is that these, uh, I think I mentioned this before, these are on the asset store. Pretty nice uh, little objects for, um, if you want to just throw something in, pretty nice little 2D uh, icons. I took them into Photoshop and did a little bit of tweaking with them so they look a little more squarish than they normally are. Definitely would recommend them though, um, if not for your game, for at least prototyping some stuff. So, Cool. Well, I will see you guys hopefully in another day or two and have some more updates. So until then, guys. Later.